Now, a fossil unearthed on the Isle of Skye is the largest pterosaur ever discovered from the Jurassic period. The ancient flying reptile had a wingspan of two and a half meters or eight feet and would have flown over the heads of dinosaurs 170 million years ago. Here's our science correspondent, Victoria Gill. These look a little bit like they might be teeth. And it's pretty symmetrical. Hidden in the rock for 170 million years, the teeth and bones of a Jurassic reptile. After racing the tide to cut out the limestone that entombed their discovery, the team had a rocky journey to bring it back to their lab. But here, they've revealed the secrets of this Isle of Skye pterosaur that they've named Jark Skianark, Gaelic for winged reptile. I think it's a lot clearer if we put the head back on. So we remove ah. the head to CAT scan it, but we can put it right back there, join it up with the neck, and you oh. can see the neck and it leads to a body. You have a wing on each side. Over here you have the hand with these feisty sharp little claws and then you have a tail going that way. So. You've seen a lot of fossils in your time. <laughs> um, so how, how significant is this one? Oh, this is far and away the best thing we've ever found on Sky. To get something like this preserved in 3D is just a, a one in a billion thing. The hollow bones of this flying reptile are very fragile, but X-ray scans of the skull have revealed even more detail. Talk me through what you have in your hands. Uh, I'm holding a model of Jark Skianak. It was commissioned by a local artist, and it's more or less how the creature might have looked like in real life. You can see how well adapted to flight it was. It had this elongated wing finger, which anchored entire membrane. It was also very streamlined. You can see how the jaw was related to flying and catching fishes filled with those very sharp teeth. It has a very long tail, which was used as a rudder when in flight. Uh, and yeah, it's absolutely charismatic. I love him. He's so goofy. <laughs> We walked in Jurassic footprints when we visited the Isle of Skye with this same research team back in 2015. And you can see the toes. Fossilised depressions left by giant sauropods, the biggest animals ever to have walked the Earth. And this fossil, the researchers say, is the largest pterosaur from that same period. You can see with this model, this is the average size of a Jurassic pterosaur skull. And this is Yark, the newly discovered fossil from the Isle of Skye. So this was a big flying reptile. The team's now sending it on another journey, this time just down the road to the National Museum of Scotland, where it will eventually be put on display. But the Jurassic limestone slab weighs almost 200 kilos. It's a humble last trip on a pallet for a creature that's been buried since the age of the dinosaurs. Victoria Gill, BBC News in Edinburgh. And we caught a glimpse of him in Victoria's report. Let's talk now to paleontologist Professor Steve uh, Brusati from the University of Edinburgh. Uh, great to have you with us today. And I know that you have officially unveiled uh, the pterosaur at the National Museums of Scotland, where it will be in the permanent collection. Um, what an exciting moment for you. Thank you. And you saw in Vic's piece there, uh, this is a big animal. <laughs> we were struggling with that slab. And that's the real significance. We have a Jurassic aged pterosaur or, or a pterodactyl. Uh, and this thing was as big as the biggest flying birds today. Its wingspan would have been over eight feet wide. It would have been wider than a king size bed. And nobody ever found anything like this uh, in Scotland before, or really from anywhere else in the world. So we're, we're very, very excited and we're very happy to be unveiling it today at the National Museum in Scotland. So uh, reading um, a little background to this last night, uh, uh, I discovered that this tells paleontologists that pterosaurs got larger much earlier than you thought. So, so why is that significant? We used to think that pterosaurs were pretty small for the first several tens of millions of years of their evolution, that they never really got bigger than about four or five meter wingspans, give or take. And then later on in the Cretaceous period, the end of the age of dinosaurs, the time of T-Rex, you got some pterosaurs that were as big as fighter jets, the biggest things that have ever flown. Now we have this Jurassic age fossil and, this, and we're seeing a big pterosaur at about 170 million years ago, as big as the biggest flying birds today. So already pterosaurs had evolved that size. And when this animal was soaring over the heads of dinosaurs in the lagoons of ancient sky during the Jurassic period, it was the biggest thing that we know of that had ever flown 
in the entire history of the earth. And it's known from a beautiful fossil. This is just a superlative Scottish fossil. Nothing like this has been found here before. It's gorgeously preserved. And we're just very pleased to have uh, such a nice fossil like this from here in Scotland. Absolutely. And, and when it was alive and flying over the Isle of Skye 170 million years ago, tell us more about what this pterosaur looked like beyond the, the sheer scale of it. This was a big animal. So imagine you are in ancient Scotland. It is much warmer than today, subtropical climate, kind of like uh, the Canary Islands, the Mediterranean. And you're in an ancient lagoon. In the distance, you see these giant long necked dinosaurs wading through the water. And then overhead, the sun goes into shadow because you have this enormous creature with wings more than eight feet wide, sailing, soaring over you, diving into the water to snatch fish. That is what Scotland used to be like. That's what we have with this fossil. I'm incredibly proud of our team here at the University of Edinburgh who discovered and studied this fossil. And I just have to say, one of our PhD students, Amelia Penny, found this fossil on Sky. Students always find the best fossils. And my current PhD student, Natalia Yagelska, she is studying this for her PhD. It's been an amazing thing today to see the two of them all over the news. Amazing. And just in a line, can the public see it now? The specimen uh, is in the permanent collections of the National Museum of Scotland, as it should be. This is a crown jewel of, of Scottish prehistory. For the moment, it's going to go back to the university. Natalia has to finish her PhD. She has about another year and a half. Uh, and then it, in due course, it will come back here to the museum. Um, wonderful. Uh, great to talk to you today. Really, really interesting. Professor uh, Steve Brissetti, thank you very much.